Good morning, simulation farmers. This is the Pyro Moth keeping you warm on the ribbon and cool in your heart. Here's a little melody from the old Cuddle Cats with their classic hit, Let Me Up, Let Me Down, But Don't Let Me In. Good morning. Across the rolling hills, I ramble at my will. Across the rolling hills, I come riding. With my banner in the wind, I come riding. With my banner in the wind. Ah, thanks for activating me, Master. Which simulated universe will you enter today? Hmm. Hmm. Earth 19432. Due to an easily avoidable operator error, all beings on this Earth have been destroyed. Ah, oh, shit. Deleting Earth. Hmm. Earth 4169. Due to yet another operator error, is undergoing a zombie apocalypse. You picked Glasses Man. This sim has a 23 charisma rating. Great choice. Targeting Glasses Man. Avatar selection screen. Lady Charlotte. Huh? Pig Lord. Mm. Mr. Left Up. Mm -mm. Poppy. Pip. J Pop. Beach Body. Whoa. Beach Body selected. Merging with Simulator in three, two, one. one. Oh no, glasses, man. No, no, no. Please, please don't be dead. I'm sorry. Please don't be dead. Your little glasses. I'll fix your glasses. I, I'm the president. Whoa. Cool. D do you mind if I record you for my um, vidcast, datacast, data stream? My data stream, it goes out to everyone in the system. It, it goes into space. Sure. Okay, great. <laughs> It just takes a second to set up. Uh, sorry, sorry about this. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, I guess, <clears throat> well, I just want to thank you, first of all. It's a privilege, man. I know you've got to be incredibly busy right now with the zombie apocalypse happening yeah, around you. Zombies, I, I really don't want to talk about zombies. That is... Okay, uh, what about the marijuana protesters? Those assholes? Yeah. First of all, people don't understand my point of view. They think somehow I'm anti-pot or anti-legalization. Right. I'm not actually pro either. I, I'm I'm pro <clears throat> human liberty. I'm pro the American system. I'm pro letting the people determine their laws. Right. I, I don't think this is. If I had to have a you know somebody press press my face in the mirror and said, "Is it going to be good or bad?" I think it might end up being kind of not so good for people. But so I'll deal with it. I'll, my, my profession will deal Mr. with President, it. It's okay. Uh, I just maybe it will end up being good. Uh, I don't. What? What? Can't you see I'm doing an interview with... Um, My name's Clancy. I gotta get back to Clancy here. Zombies are inside uh, the per perimeter. Just, uh, just get me a rifle. I I'll take care of it. You were saying. Oh, yeah. I read a recent study that said medical marijuana was associated with close to 30% yeah. fewer deaths. It's, it's actually it's actually more data has come in since that. What's the data? The data is if there's a lot of, if there's available recreational pot, opiate use is way down. Oh, just so it simple, is helping. Simple. It's just I know. Simple. I saw that too and I thought, oh, this, this could be the answer. Would you mind following me outside? Yeah. This could be the answer to the opiate epidemic and the chronic pain thing. I would much, we would much rather see people on a lot of pot than any of the pills that they're taking out because the pill combo that they get on, the, the opiate and the benzodiazepine and the sleeping medicine, A, kills. Absolutely. When patients die of drug use, that's how they die today. B, perpetuates their pain. Yeah. They're disabled by, they're, just, they're helpless. Pot, it, yeah, some people are on the couch so they smoke a lot of pot, but some people work just fine. Well, one f facet yeah. of marijuana that doesn't exist in the opiates is that if you overdose on marijuana... Uh, Hello. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Hello. Thank you, Mr. President. Hello. Mr. President. Thank you. Anyway. Um, 
you uh, your you don't mind, die you, you don't, don't die. die but you are dragged through your own personal neurosis inner weaknesses oh fears. If, if you over yeah, if you have a quote overdose they, people yeah. say i feel paranoid yeah. and usually what they mean is the marijuana is showing all these parts of myself that i don't necessarily want to deal with right now and that can create a lot of positive change for people now not all the time a lot of times i've definitely have been paranoid and the things i've worried about are ridiculous and absurd and when i sober up it's i recognize that but a lot of times some of the stuff i'm shown uh on a on a heavy dose of marijuana i come out of that knowing shit man i've got to work on this i need why am i not exercising i need to exercise more this is ridiculous yeah. why am i i'm drinking a little too much right now i need to slow down drinking Th that also did i ever talk to you about how i uh, almost died on sleeping pills years and years and no. years ago oh god oh man um there was a, a, a guy came to this party I was at selling sleeping bones at like 12 p.m. at a Sorry. party. The worst thing you could ever do. Get your cars now. Go yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. And this was. And, and how much you been drinking? Oh, perfect. Good combo. And yeah. And I bought some from him. I don't even know why I would want to. Why I would do that. I'm well aware of the fact that you should never, ever, ever in a million years take benzos and drink. Never do it. It's what kills everybody. This is the death Combo. combo yeah it is so i did it and i remember one I, of the death combos one of the there death are a few combos. of them out there i think i i took one pill and then i'm drinking and like feeling relaxed and but i forgot I, this is the danger of the benzo this is how it kills you, you yeah you forget yeah and then i and took Ambien, another another one does that you forget yeah. is, is it, by the way not that i i let me just clarify my <laughs> i hate this idea of good drugs and bad drugs there's no such thing as a good drug and a bad drug. There's the, there's this chemical that's neither good nor bad. It just exists out there. We either created it or exist in nature. And then it's the relationship that humans have with the substance that is the issue. So and smart. what our individual biology is and what it triggers and whatnot. That's the problem. Like, Valium? <gasps> what? If you are um, need to have a colonoscopy... Valium and Valium light drug, Great. really good. <laughs> now, if you're just drinking absinthe and then partying and about to drive home, really bad. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Not because Valium's good or bad, because the circumstance and the relationship is bad. I'll never forget it, man. I, I was laying in bed that night trying to remember how many of the pills I had taken oh. as I'm passing out. God. As I'm passing out. And then I realized... Oh, I can't move. Like oh. I, I, I'm, I'm. If I wanted to get up right now, I, I don't think that I could get up. And this is as I'm fading out into oh, darkness. Geez. And then you know, I woke up the next day, thank God, and I was alive. But if I had vomited, that's it. I would have died. That's how they die. Yeah, that's it. It's I have a friend who died. It's called aspiration pneumonia. Sorry, sir. You, you can, you, you don't have to vomit a lot either. Sometimes it just be reflux. Sometimes it can just be a little saliva. Oh. And it goes down the wrong tube, gets into your lungs, and all oh. the bacteria that's in your mouth goes into your lungs where it don't belong. You set up a pneumonia, become septic, you go into shock, and you die in about uh. 30 minutes, 50, oh. 60 minutes. It can happen fast. my God. Those things are evil. Yeah. Evil, 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 well, no, evil. <laughs> in that situation. It's not the chemical. The chemical is just a thing of nature. Oh. Oh. <gasps> All right, look, we're going to have to initiate Alpha Protocol. Ooh. Onward, Charlotte. Good luck, sir. It's been a privilege to serve her to you. And, and what's interesting to me, I'm clarifying our sort of back and forth, too, because I'm, you know, I, I love being around people that help me see the world through a new pair of glasses, and, and you're one of those people. Thank you. And so I'm open to all the stuff you say, and I think it's fascinating. And then I go, but, but you could hurt somebody. You notice that? I'm yeah. always like, but, but what if? And yeah. In the past, the founding fathers talked about pumping uh, mushrooms into world, the horrible world leaders. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. And we, and we said he'd get insight and he'd be happy and he'd, he'd realize what he was doing. And I thought, or he'd go darker. And he'd get we don't know. He'd, that's true. It's the or that always ooh. We better get out of here. For sure. One of my f favorite statements is, you know, health is about accepting and perceiving and dealing with reality on reality's terms. Mm. Is there anybody out there? This is Chuck Charles. If you want to get saved, get in. Come to the mall. Get in.
Now, you said something that stayed with me, which was the analogy of the elevator and hallucinogens. Yes. Do you yeah. use that often, or is that... So what... the metaphor is that it's compared to an elevator that uh, takes you up to the very top floor of this building where this incredibly par- incredible party is happening. The doors open up. You see this amazing uh, utopian nirvanic you situation. you never really knew was there. You've never seen it before. Never even knew it was there. And yeah. then the elevator, the thing dings, the doors shut. It comes back down, and suddenly you're screaming at people in traffic again. And so that so that's an analogy for what hallucinogens do. That's and of right. Course, and this is again my my ver- my con- contribution as I went. Yeah, but what if it doesn't let you off on the first floor and ends up two Taking floors into lower. the basement? Taking you lower. Taking you lower. After yeah. that, as the the doctor in me always worries about that. Yeah, and 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 it, let's say that it does take you lower. Let's yeah. say that you get to go up in a hot air balloon and see the very top of some beautiful mountain, and then the hot air balloon gets blown off course a yeah. little bit. You've still seen the top of the mountain, and I think that uh, there's that, the independent value of that. Holy shit! Die, die, die! Die again! Are you fucking kidding me? Come here. Uh, Fuck you. Come on. Are you okay? Yeah. Just keep moving. You know what's weird? Why are we even running from them? They're pretty slow. I know. Yeah, look, we could just stand. Look, let's just stand still. Let's st- let's st- Come get me. Come on, zombies. Right here! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think that's my aunt. Oh, my God, them all. <laughs> so then I asked the question, so how do we get there in a way that we're in control of and we can stay there? Damn zombies! Yeah, that's the, that's the big question. Yeah. I think it's a lot of things. I think, uh, you know, I am right now in a, really into this type of meditation, uh, which is um, <clears throat> just the process of sitting still, watching your breath, and being very aware of your thoughts, emotions, uh, and, and the way your body feels. And it's just this uh, something called mindfulness. It's the practice of mindfulness, which yeah. is just watching the way that you act and the way that you feel and the way that you think. I think this is the cure. And becoming aware of the roots of a lot of the uh, emotions that exist in you, yeah. especially for me, like I get angry and, and I will have like angry outbursts sometimes. Yeah, I, thank you for look, looking perplexed that that happens. It happens. It, 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 just sitting by yourself, anger will, will come out or... Is it like traffic? Well, no, traffic, it's, it's gotten much better. No. But, I mean, w- when I was much younger, I was just an angry person. So huh. I would, like, I can remember, like, my printer didn't work one day, and oh. I remember screaming alone in my apartment, breaking my printer in, in just a rage. I'm cured. It's not for a game of hockey, sir. <laughs> and that, that's a thing that's inside of me, and that's why psychedelics have been very useful to me. But also meditation has been incredibly useful because now I can sit and I can meditate and then maybe the dogs will bark, yeah. right, while I'm meditating. I can watch the irritation sort of flower inside of me and then when it's there, they say, look at it as though you're sitting in a forest and you're getting to watch a rare animal walking out in the clearing. And instead of, you know, as most of us do when anger comes in, we react to it. We go into reactivity mode, which is like maybe you would stop meditating and scream at your dogs, or you would do something to, like, make them quiet. So the behavior that amplifies it. Yeah, that's it. So you just watch. You watch, you watch. Buddha compares anger to a sweet flower with bitter roots. And so we follow the sweetness down, down, down. Is she in labor? (laughs) Yeah, she's like... Okay, all right, okay. Hey, you all right? Need anything? Just breathe. We, we were planning a water birth. Let's pull over. Maybe we can find something. Hmm. What? Oh, my God. 
What, 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 what are we talking about? He was talking about meditation or something. Yeah, or just watching your feelings. You know, you, you follow the feelings down, down into the poisonous roots. Do of you the do thing. that in a kind of feeling way or in an insight way, if that makes sense? In other words, you just follow the feelings or do you have some sort of specific, oh, that reminds me of some experience or something? Well, it's called noting is what they, so you would, you, you can, what, you know, it's like, it's just, think about an emotion, yeah. right? These are these really kind of ambiguous. Yeah, these bodily based things you're faintly aware of many times. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's, what is that thing, right? Yeah. So this is the practice of taking a microscope and looking into the recurring emotional patterns that are happening inside of you. Because most of the time, if you have a negative emotion, you'll try to avoid it. Yeah. You try to move on to the next activity when some kind of emotional state, we are always in a state of kind of turning back on the thing. Damn zombies. What happens? if we don't turn our backs what and zoom in on the thing and, and, and see what is this fractal and it's really an interesting practice just right. Right. and push breathe oh no you can do this push breathing's before but push. then you breathe isn't it breathe no it's push. the push oh hello dear let's get out of here in buddhism the idea is all of those mental uh forms of analysis of these things are kind of secondary to the very simple observation of the way any emotional state or thought or bodily feeling has a similar pattern and that it heightens, heightens, dissipates, dissipates, and goes away. For me, a lot of that magical stuff you're talking about happens in an interpersonal context. I'm a kind of person that it's very difficult for me to stay with some of those things unless there's a presence. But they are also people like you that, you know, you say mindfulness, it's a massive field these days. And most people practice it, don't do it as well as what you're describing. What you're saying, though, is a big part of the practice, too. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Sangha, the spiritual community, which is acknowledged in Buddhism, too. What's important is uh, let's encourage each other to get as close to the truth as we can, or as you mentioned earlier, to meeting reality on reality's terms. Yeah. You know, I think that, that this big surprise is everyone's like, oh, reality sucks, the world oh, sucks, oh. everything's... Come here, bud. We're trying to do this process where we sort of keep going backwards and we, until we can't look at ourselves anymore. We want to go to this complete observer state yes. until you get to the thing. Your awareness of awareness. That's it. Yeah. And then you become pure awareness. Yeah. And the yeah. concept is that is what we really are yeah. and that this entire material universe, including our body, is a kind of phen 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 I can't say it. Phenomenological. Phenomenological field of, of phenomena, a field of phenomena being encapsulated within this consciousness. And so the, the idea that I am alone or the idea that I am an individual is actually, interestingly enough, you're already not. It's false. It's, it's a distortion. Because you're the thing and the observer simultaneously meeting together, and that's what creates the illusion of self. I mean, if the universe was a dolphin, then basically our bodies would be a, a fishing net. We're all kind of entangled in ourselves. You feel shit like that when you're high on acid? Yes, you do. Whoa. This feels really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it. Yeah, it uh, kind of sounds like the zombies are... The zombos are singing. First we're born, and then we die, and in between most of us spend all the time crying. Once we were blind, but now we can see. It feels good to be a zombie. Now I see there's nothing to get in and nothing to get out of. It's that simple. We move slow.
so much for being a great guest. Do you have any last words? Mm, thank you for having me. Last words. I, I, there's no such thing as a bad drug. It's the circumstances. Goodbye. Holy shit, friends, did you see that? Guts ripped out, and yet, here I am, all in one piece. Thank you so much, oh great denizens.